Appreciate you joining me today. Hope you're having a good day. Today we're going to be thinking about Abel from Genesis chapter 4. Before we read the passage, the hymn that we are going to, the, the hymn we're going to look at and perhaps even sing along to, if you'd like, is Savior Like a Shepherd, Lead Us. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us, much we need thy tenderest care. In thy pleasant pastures feed us, for our use thy foes prepare. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast bought us, thine we are. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Thou hast bought us, Thine we are. Jesus, the Good Shepherd. So now let's turn our attention for just a moment to Abel, another shepherd as it is. Let's read the passage. Genesis chapter 4 verse 1. Now Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Then she bore again, this time his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of the sheep, a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering. Of course, he did not respect Cain and his. So, what might we consider about Abel? Abel is spoken about a couple places, a um, couple places in Hebrews as well as other passages. But there's a couple passages in Hebrews that, that make a good point. And one is, and, and I think you can infer it from the passage, it, it is not as though in the process of time in verse 3 that these, that, that Abel just, made this up, that all of a sudden they just realized, oh, we need to bring sacrifices. We, we need to make offerings. No, the Lord commanded it. And Hebrew says that Abel offered it in faith. Well, where does faith come from? Well, faith comes from the Word of God. And of course, we're in the patriarchal dispensation, so somehow God had conveyed his expectation. And Abel brought it in faith. But Cain, Cain did not, I think is the contrast. And let's contrast the different offerings. And this is a little more speculative, but perhaps within reason. Think about the different offerings, and we see it especially in the old law. But, but even here as the offerings have begun, and... Um, but anyway, I was just there. Let me put it this way. When the Lord made the tunics for Adam and Eve, the Lord had to do something with an animal. And so the Lord may have been teaching them. That's a little speculation. But you might consider what had to give its life and what there had to be a shedding of in order for them to wear those tunics. Anyway. Here in thinking about Abel, and we think about the different offerings, and you have you have a firstborn, the firstborn of his flock. Hebrews makes the point; it talks about his gifts, plural. Abel brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat, both things. The fat belongs to the Lord, but we contrast this with Cain's offering. But just to focus on on Abel's. And we think about what burnt offerings were for. And that what burnt offerings were for, one of the things it was for, was for sin. Grain offerings were thank offerings. And we should be thankful. We should be thankful. But before we should be thankful, we should first petition the Lord and ask for the forgiveness of our sins. And we ask for God's mercy. And without the shedding of blood, there's, there's no remission of sins. And 
The life is in the blood. The life is not in the husk of the plant. And Abel brought a burnt offering. And it's fat, the first of the flock. Doesn't say that Cain was insincere or anything like that. But the Lord respected the Lord respected Abel's offering. And so from this very early account, we see that not all offerings are accepted. Not all worship was accepted. Cain, Cain's offering was not. Abel's was. The Hebrews passage speaks about that by his gifts, that God served as witness that he was righteous, that Abel was righteous. Now, does that mean he had never sinned? I don't think so. I think that's why he's bringing this offering. And the Lord respected it. Romans speaks about, blessed is the man to whom um, God forgives, frankly, to read about Abraham and David. And we recognize the Lord's mercy. We are thankful for the Lord's mercy. But first we petition, we call upon the name of the Lord because we recognize we need the Lord's mercy, because we recognize that we've sinned. And Abel, as Abel brought it in faith, it's a possibility that this, this might be why the Lord respected it, because Abel was humbling himself, and not just simply saying, thanks for the prosperity, but that he was returning to the Lord, as it was in bringing his offering and and humbling himself in that way. Let me, let, let's look over in Hebrews. Over in Hebrews, the two passages, let me get them up on the screen. In Hebrews chapter 11, at verse 4, By faith Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and through it, he being dead still speaks. And we need to listen. Now chapter 12, a little further in the account, further in the account, where it speaks about it's contrasting the church with Sinai, is what it's doing. Verse 23, we've come to verse 22, we've come to Mount Zion. Verse 23, to the general, general assembly and church of the firstborn who were registered in heaven to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. See that you do not refuse him who speaks. Talking about the Lord. Well, what is that business about the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel? It's not speaking about Abel's blood that Cain shed. That's not, that's not in the context. The context that we just read in chapter 11 is speaking about the offering that Abel made. And so as we've thought about this, what was Abel's offering for? It was for his own sins. What was the Lord's offering for? The Lord's offering was for our sins. And so that's how it speaks better things than that of Abel. Abel's, Abel's gifts, God respected, certainly. But at the same time, the blood of bulls and goats does not take away sin. And so we're thankful for Jesus. And those in the Bible who were shepherds, they understood sheep. And how often they spoke and wrote about the Lord being their shepherd. And then Jesus comes, and he's a carpenter, but he's the good shepherd. And so, pardon me, we say what the hymn says, because we are sheep of his pasture. We are the sheep of his flock. And we say, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Much we need thy tender care. In thy pleasant pastures feed us. For our use, 
thy folds prepare. Blessed Jesus. Blessed Jesus. Abel had faith. Who are they all looking forward to? They're all looking forward to the Messiah. Who do all the faithful look towards? Blessed Jesus. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Appreciate you. Hope you have a good day. Hope you join us tomorrow for another look into Scripture and another hymn. Daily praise.